Hey guys, it's Tori. Welcome to my channel or welcome if you're new. So in today's video, we are going to sublimate a coffee mug using a confection toaster oven. So let's go ahead and head on over to Cricut Design Space. I'm going to be using this template and I like this template because it has the grooves which make it connect really nicely on the coffee mug. So that measurement is already set. So what we want to do is take our image and kind of shrink it down and make it kind of fit that template. So we'll want to go ahead and hit unlock on our image. And then I'm just going to kind of adjust the size until I get it close to the template. Now I do want my image to be a tad bit bigger than the template because I'm going to place the template on top of my image and then we're going to slice it, which is just like cutting out that image. So if you have any issues with bringing that template to the front, you would just click on a line and then bring to front. And then you want to select align and center that way we know that the template is in the exact centered spot of the image and then you'll select slice so now you'll see that the image is sliced the next step is to go ahead and hit make it and mirror the image and the material size is eight and a half by 14 and then we're going to hit continue and we're going to send it to the sublimation printer, which I will be using my Epson ET2720. We need to change the printer to the Epson, and then I'm going to leave the bleed on. And then we're also going to turn use system dialog on. Reason being is when you select that and then you hit print, it takes you directly to the printing preferences and you'll want to double check the printing preferences before you hit print. We'll need to go ahead and select the Epson here as well and then click on preference. And then I need to change the document size to eight and a half by 11 premium paper and quality type should be high and then you'll want to go to more options and you want to make sure that the high speed and the mirror image and all of that are not checked because we already mirrored it in Cricut Design Space. Then we'll select advanced and the color control. Then the color mode is Adobe RGB, gamma is 2.2 and then I adjusted my colors to my liking, everyone's different, so you'll just go ahead and adjust those to yours as well. Then you'll hit OK, OK. Now we're ready to go ahead and hit print. Once your sublimation paper is done printing, we're going to want to go over to Cricut Design Space and I'm going to select laser paper and you'll want to place the sublimation paper on the Cricut mat. Make sure that you look at the image in Cricut Design Space and you place it that exact same way so the reader can know how to cut the image. So I'm going to be using a 15 ounce Cricut beveled mug and the first step is cleaning it with rubbing alcohol and the reason we do this is to make sure that all the debris is off of the mug because once you sublimate it will stay on there. So we'll just go ahead and clean it thoroughly and then you want to make sure to dry it as well. So we're now ready to apply the image to the mug and when you apply it on there you want to make sure that you place it right side up and you're going to wrap it around the mug and you want to make sure that it's very snug so that it is pressing firmly against the mug and we're going to take heat resistant tape and we need to tape it as well. You also want to make sure that the bottom and the top are both even. They're lined up correctly. When applying the heat resistant tape, you wanna make sure that you get underneath the handle of the mug. You wanna make sure that the sublimation paper is pressed as firmly as possible against the mug. So we're gonna go ahead and tape under the handle. And then I'm also going to tape the top of the rim of the mug and the bottom just to reinforce the paper again and then we are ready to go ahead and use the sublimation shrink wrap what i like to do is just cut the shrink the shrink wrap um, down the middle and i like to take the mug and pretend i'm going to wrap it 
like a present. And you'll see the handle on the side. I'm just gonna make a snip right there and then cut off that little portion so that when I place the mug in there, the handle can go out the side. You know what I mean? It makes it a lot easier when wrapping. And then you'll just go ahead and continue wrapping it and using the heat resistant tape. I also like to reinforce the handles here as well. And once we're done with that, we are ready to go ahead and use the heat gun and heat the shrink wrap. So we're going to sublimate with this confection toaster oven. We're gonna go ahead and set it to 400 degrees and we are going to preheat it for at least 15 minutes. When using the confection toaster oven, you need to make sure to wear heat resistant gloves because it is very, very hot. Once it's preheated, we're gonna go ahead and place parchment paper on the inside on top of the rack. You want to do that because the shrink wrap, when it melts, will stick to the rack, and you rather it stick to the parchment paper instead of damaging your rack. And we're gonna go ahead and place the mug inside the confection toaster oven. And we're going to set the timer for 15 minutes. In my situation, I will not be rotating it since it fits in there nicely. I don't need to rotate it. And we're gonna go ahead and sublimate it for 15 minutes. So it's been 15 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and turn the confection toaster oven off. Make sure our heat resistant gloves are back on. And we're gonna go ahead and take the mug out of the toaster oven. And we're gonna go ahead and start taking the shrink wrap off. It is very hot to touch. Even though you have heat resistant gloves on, it is still very, very warm. So you just be very careful. And we're gonna go ahead and unwrap it. I think it turned out super, super adorable. What do you guys think? So what I'm going to do is if you like this image and it's something that you guys want, I'm gonna go ahead and place it on my Facebook group page. So all you need to do is go into my descriptions in my video below, request to be on my Facebook group and I will go ahead and place that image in the Facebook group so you can just go ahead and grab it from there and use it. I hope you guys enjoyed my tutorial today and learned something new. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.